you for participating in this interview as a small contribution to International Women's Day 2014. The aim of this project is to give us an opportunity to communicate with inspirational female leaders with the UN system. We hope these interviews can be a tool to empower young women like us who will be inspired and motivated motivated to achieve successes by the example of yourself as a role model. This supports the theme of this year's International Women's Day, Equality for Women Means Progress for All. We are excited by the opportunity to talk with leading women at the very top of the UN system in order to gain insight into how they achieve their positions of leadership and learn about their experiences and challenges in doing so. My name is Victoria Moody-Selda and I'm 10 years old and I study at Blackheath High Junior School. My name is Fleur Perry Kilby, I am 10 years old and I study at Blackheath High Juniors. My name is Suzanne Smith and I'm 15 years old and I study at Blackheath High Senior School. My name is Yasmin Cooper and I'm 15 years old and I study at Blackheath High Senior School. So I think we're ready to begin. What is a typical working day in the life of Maria Marta Santos Pais? What are you involved in at the moment and what is your favourite part of your job? Thank you. Well, first of all, very good morning. I'm Marta Santos Pais, and, and I am a lawyer and I am Portuguese, so that you have a sense of who, who I am. You know, I'm very happy to be in this uh, job in the United Nations. Uh, as you may imagine, dealing with the rights of the child is like a passion and it's a great privilege. It's not really a job because we go with such joy every day to our work thinking about what we can do to support better life for children, girls and boys everywhere in the world and to raise awareness about things that are not perfect and those that are working well that we can bring to the attention of governments. The ability of just sitting around the same table you know, with young people but also parliamentarians and governments and teachers and social workers and families is a fantastic opportunity. So every day's job is a very good day. No? We start with great enthusiasm. And then uh, we are always trying to do better. You know, one of the biggest opportunities to work in the UN is to support changes around the world. So I am very happy now that we are, as you said, approaching the Commission on the Status of Women and discussions on the rights of girls and women to see how we can contribute. And at the same time, I'm also preparing for another important meeting in the United Nations, which is about the rights of the child. It will take place in Geneva. And once again, I'm very committed to bringing good news. You know, we have today so many countries with very good pieces of legislation to protect children from violence, but also to bring less good news, you know, remind governments that there is a lot to do and for instance, many girls are not yet allowed to go to school because they are helping their families in the home or because they need to take care of their younger siblings and they want to learn like you are doing in your wonderful school. What is it like to be a woman working for the UN across countries with different cultural expectations of women? You know, as I said, uh, working in the UN for men and women and uh, young people, it's a great, great privilege. Uh, as you know, the United Nations is the most, is the widest forum that exists in the world where uh, representatives of governments from all regions of the world can sit to discuss common concerns, to identify problems, and to try to challenge their creativity to find solutions that can work, that can help us to improve the reality for everyone and particularly for girls and boys around the world. So uh, being a woman, being part of that process, of course, is fantastic. And when I think, is it different for the reason that I am a woman? In a way, it's not that different because we sit in meetings like everybody else and we can bring our opinions, we can influence the decisions. But I think br being a woman allows us to sometimes put the finger on what is the real difference of what we are discussing for the life of the girl and the boy I just met in Thailand, or, you know, the, the boy and the girl who live in Tanzania, in Africa, or the girls who are living in the United Kingdom. And by bringing that sensitivity, I think that women help to force solutions that can really make a difference, a difference, not simply being perfect. You know, sometimes we have 
like we do in school, a perfect essay, but the essay doesn't really translate into concrete solutions for people. So I think a woman can help that uh, element. But at the same time, you know, we also realize in my work uh, that very often people think, oh, dealing with children is women's uh, concerns and women's issues. Women should deal with this. And when I go to meetings, very often we see many women in the audience. So that is good because you meet fantastic leaders, you know, in communities, in governments, in parliaments, in civil society organizations. But at the same time, being alone, we will not be able to achieve the solutions that we want to see happening in the world. So being a woman is also an opportunity to convince men, and in fact to convince boys, to sit with us, to reflect with us, you know, to think about what can each one of us do to have a better world, rather than seeing ourselves separated into groups with different perspectives and not coming together with very good solutions. And when we achieve that, you know, what we realize is that the decisions are better and everybody feels I was part of it, now I'm going to push for it to achieve the results that we had in mind. And I imagine that being in the UN working women and men is not very different from, from what you may have in a school where you have girls and boys discussing together about common issues of concern, you know, when they discuss bullying, how you prevent it, how you bring solutions. So I'm sure you will have many similar situations like my own uh, in your daily work with colleagues uh, who are boys and who are not girls like you. What was life like when you were in high school? What was your dream job then? <laughs> Uh, you know, when I was in high school, I was very excited to go to school, because first because I was with many friends, like all of you, you know, it's so good to discuss together, to play together, to learn together, and we build friendships for life. So it's, it was very good in that regard. Uh, and I was very excited by the opportunity of learning new things, you know, uh, having the opportunity to learn about the cultures and the developments in other countries when we were studying geography or history, um, having the opportunity of feeling much more confident in uh, thinking critically, not only replicating and memorizing what we were being taught by our teachers, but trying to see how does that help me understand and find solutions for my daily problems. And I always felt very inspired by um, many good teachers that I had, you know, that were forcing us to really be confident and at the same time search for creative solutions that were not necessarily the traditional ones. But being in high school, for me, was also an eye-opener, you know. I realized that I was a very lucky child. I, I, I was coming from a family who cared a lot for me. Uh, my father and my mother uh, could discuss with me all the issues that I wanted to raise, and they could guide me at home when I had a problem with mathematics or I could not understand exactly what an essay should be. So I was very lucky, but I realized that not all my friends were as lucky as me. And I remember at that time, there were much less girls in school than is the case today. Today in my country, which is Portugal, the majority of the students are girls, in fact, but that was not the case at that time. And what I realized was that many of my friends came from families where the parents were not so knowledgeable about the issues we were learning. And so if they had a problem in the school, they didn't have that help that for me, I, it was taken for granted. I could just, you know, go to the um, room where my father or mother were working and say, hey, could you help me? I don't understand how to do it. So it was a very good opportunity to realize that there are different situations and we need to be expressing a great deal of solidarity in learning from everyone, but also supporting those who are not as lucky as we are. So that was good. And then what was my, my dream job at that time? You know, I, I wanted very much to be a judge, uh, perhaps because my father was a judge and he had such a great influence in my life. But I remember that I felt it was very important to help those who were in problem to find solutions, to give advice, to try to find fair solutions. And very often, even in school, I, I felt that those friends of mine who were very poor, 
who, f who thought that they, did, they could not really argue because people would not be on their side and sometimes they were on the right side, they seemed not to have the same opportunity. So I wanted to be a judge to help those who would not have a voice, who needed to be supported and to help always find just and fair solutions in our life. I think that challenge remains still today, you know. In a way, what we do in the UN is searching for fairness and justice and help everybody feel as important as your neighbor. So I, I think my dream job is coming true in a way. Who, who inspired you when you were in school? Who inspires you now? Huh. When I was in school, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I was very inspired by some of my teachers. You know, uh, they seemed very autonomous, very confident, incredibly knowledgeable, and very ready to provide advice. And rather than expecting us to be the good students that have always the good mark, but just memorize and repeat things that we are supposed to learn in the books and in the classroom, they were uh, pushing us beyond the border, you know. They were trying to encourage us to find different ways of uh, solving problems, doing research on topics that were not completely part of the curriculum, telling about the experiences that could be very new for us because they were happening in Africa or in Asia or in Latin America. So I had many, many good references in, amongst the teachers who were with me. But I, I, I mean, in, in real fairness, I think my parents were the real inspiration, I have to say, and particularly my, my father, as I said, with his work as a judge and working with young people, very often young people who had to run away from home because they were confronted with violence uh, or abuse. Uh, they didn't have really a place to go. And his voice and his support as a judge was very important. So he kept me, in, inspiring me all the time. Now, today, if I think uh, about what is inspiring me the most, uh, to be honest, I think it is the girls and boys I meet every day, you know, girls like you. Uh, b because uh, all the time you bring a lot of creativity. You make us realize that problems that seem very difficult can be solved. And you help us discover uh, realities that seem so obvious that we fail to notice it. You know, I I'm going to tell you a little story. One day I was in Africa and we were discussing trafficking in children and the government had done so many good things and the non-government organizations were working very hard. And then we decided to ask children how they felt about the problem. And we gave them some cameras, you know, for them to take photos of the places or the things that for them would connect with trafficking. And all of a sudden, they came back with their cameras and most of the pictures were about the bus, the central bus station, and about the central market in that capital city. And we could not understand why they were saying, they were showing us that photos. And you know what happened? These were the two places where children were more regularly trapped and taken to be trafficked into other parts of this country or into other countries. And if we had not joined hands with these children, we would never have thought about that. So I, I feel very inspired by young people. They, they feel me, they make me feel very young, I think also, but they always um, you know, open new avenues for us to go with a greater reassurance and greater hope to make a better world for all. One of our learning pillars at Blackheath High School is enterprise. What advice would you give girls at school on how to succeed on the world stage? What advice would you give us on how we can engage with important global issues and help the global community? Well, m my advice is always believe in yourself and you will bring such great suggestions for everybody. And I'm sure you're doing that amongst your, your friends and peers in, in the school and outside of school. Um, you know, it, Engaging with the global issues seems sometimes very distant, but in fact is very easy. You know, today with uh, uh, very easy access to new technologies, we are talking and uh, we are in different countries and it, it seems like you are just here with me. It's so beautiful. Uh, it becomes much easier to follow the issues and try to understand how you can contribute. 
And in my work, uh, I realize that there are many children and young people who are doing just that. So I'll give that as an example. Uh, you know, in countries in Asia and in Africa, for instance, they are building child rights clubs, school clubs, uh, or they are organizing groups that make drama or provide for peer education for other friends to discuss issues that are of relevance for all of us. For instance, very often they say, oh, I have a friend who is a girl and the parents of this girl forced this girl to get married when she was just 12. She is very young and she was forced to leave school. We don't want that to happen. She loves school. She was learning so much. She was such a good student. And if she gets married, she will not be able to develop fully and she can become married later in life. So, you know, these young people generate debates with the parents of these girls, uh, with the people in the community where they live, in the school themselves, you know, inviting parents to come and listen to them, sometimes by making a little theater play where they make a caricature of the issues that they want to portray. And that helps to raise awareness in the countries, in the communities, about the issues we are discussing in the United Nations. Child marriage is one that is very important for all of us. So I, I would say that also for you, I'm sure you're doing this, but I would say that in your school, it may be very interesting for you to organize some debates and to engage your friends and the teachers and the parents, perhaps invite some people you know that are very knowledgeable about the issues you want to discuss and then start a process where everybody feels engaged and then you can tell us here in the UN what were the results, what were your recommendations. In fact, in my work I have a website, uh, you know, I'm, uh, my title is very long but it is Special Representative of the Secretary General on Violence Against Children. And if you Google this, you will find my website. And in the website, we have what we call a children's corner, where we put many materials and news that can be of use to you. But we also want to hear from you so that we can put in our website the news of the work you are doing. I just wanted to show you one of those materials that we have just published recently, which is a child-friendly version of one convention uh, for children here, adopted here in the United Nations. And as you will see, you can see it on the website. It has beautiful, uh, you know, pictures, but it explains in very simple words how you can make use of this convention adopted by the United Nations. So it's just an idea, an example. But I want to hear, of course, about the things you will do. I'm sure you will tell me. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. I hope we will continue, even if it is not for this purpose. Every day should be Girls' Day, isn't it? So let us continue our discussion. Yes. Okay. So see you very soon and all the very best to you. Much success for what you are doing. It is so important, the work you are doing. I really want to give you my congratulations. Great questions and great comments from your side. Thank yeah? you. <laughs> see you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.